Hi guys, this is Leslie from A Series of Frugal Thoughts. I wanted to talk to you today about um, the, the importance of contentment in a person's life while he or she is being frugal and hopefully also being a minimalist. I have done a, I did a video earlier about frugality, which is defined as happily living with less. I also have done videos about minimalism and minimalism is, it says, living with less. And I would argue that it's um, happily living with less as well. Um, so to me, frugalism and frugality and minimalism are really, um, is it synonyms? I think it's synonyms, are really one and the same. Um, obviously with uh, the example, I, one of the examples I used is you can be a frugal person and get a good deal on pens for 10 cents each. And it's a frugal idea to buy the pen. But then at some point you have to say to yourself, how many of these pens do I really need? I don't necessarily need a hundred of these pens. I'm good with five of them in my home. Um, one of the things I've taught and tried to teach my children about about their lives, throughout their lives, and to me that was a really important part of parenting, was teaching my children to be content with what they had. I um, think that both from a frugal standpoint and as a minimalist standpoint, if as parents we give and give and give and give and give our children, and I know that is can be very tempting to do, they, they might not appreciate all that is given to them eventually. I can remember one of the examples um, and it was pretty insignificant at the time, but I, when it, when it happened, it made a big impact on me is we were going out to dinner with a, a, a friend of mine and we were taking, we were each of us taking our kids and I had four at the time. It was Applebee's and they had a special, it was $1.99 for kids meals. And at the time it included like an, a kid's entree, which was like chicken burgers and French fries, a drink. And at the end of the, uh, and you got dessert, which was a bowl of ice cream with chocolate sauce and um, whipped cream, which was an ice cream sundae, essentially. And the waitress had said to us, and at the end of the meal, you, if you want, you can upgrade for another dollar and get a milkshake. And I remember at the end of the meal, my friend said, yes, please upgrade my kids to a, an extra dollar. She had three children and I had four at the time. And I said, no, we can't afford it. You guys are all going to just get your ice cream in a cup. And my kids were like, oh, we'll just make our own ice cream or we'll make our own milkshake. And I think they kind of, you know, mushed it up and did their own. And number one, they learned, they, they compromised. They learned to make their own milkshake. That's, that was one thing. And they also learned that life is not full of upgrades because I don't, I, I'm not passing judgment on my friend because I don't know how else she lived her life. But in that moment, it was important to me that I did not want my, my children to think that life is full of upgrades. I, you know, sometimes life can upgrade, but not always. Sometimes, you know, when I, the example I used to my friend, I said, if we upgrade once a week for $4 over the course of 50 weeks, it's a 200, $200 a year on upgrades. You times that by 20 years of raising children, that's $4,000, I think. <laughs> but anyway, the point is, is that I wanted my children to be happy with the ice cream sundae. They didn't need to get a milkshake or they can make their own milkshake out of their ice cream sundaes, which sounds kind of gross, but I think I did it when I was a child as well. Anyway, I, that, I think that teaching children to be content with what they have, one of my, um, one of my sons goes to, was going to school in Indiana. One of his roommates was from the West coast. And I remember my son telling me that his, roommate's father would fly in, I don't know what that meant, but fly in for him, maybe send it, Amazon, I don't know, cases of Fiji water. Um, and I always thought that was so interesting. I don't know why he couldn't just get a recyclable water bottle. Um, this was like four years ago, so it wasn't like they didn't exist at the time, or why he couldn't just drink the water out of a cup. I don't know. It, it was, it was, he would drink it, walk around the dorm, apparently drinking these Fiji waters, which, and apparently he was generous and, and that's great. I'm not passing judgment on the child. I just wonder for me how much and at what point would I ever, that ever happen and how much money would I ever have to make where it would be okay for me to, to send my children cases of Fiji water. Cause I don't see that ever happening. Um, 
I mean, I'm not trying to pass judgment, but for me, that is not, I, I don't know why he couldn't have been content with the water that they had at, at, at the university or in the dorm or in the cafeteria. That's just me. Anyway, so I, I, I mean, it was water, so it wasn't even like he might have had a allergy to certain waters. It was just water. Anyway, I, I think that teaching your children contentment is incredibly important. I do think that for some people it is more difficult because I know for myself, you want to be, you know, you want to see your kids happy. You want to see them, you know, be thrilled when they get the milkshake. But sometimes teaching your children that life is not full of milkshakes is a great thing. And as a PS, all three of the, all four of those kids working in an ice cream store right now and they get milkshakes all the time whenever they want them. So that's my frugal thought for today. My name is Leslie from the series of frugal thoughts. If you like this kind of content and if you um, would like to subscribe, please do so. I really appreciate my subscribers. I can really use as many as I can get. Thank you so much. This is Leslie. Bye-bye.